tells you um, how a graph behaves, okay? Um, based on what you know about the first and second derivatives, okay? Now let's have a think about this. <clears throat> let's have a think about this. First derivative up the top, second derivative uh, along the side. This is a very technical way of saying it, and we're still just getting used to it, right? So why don't we put some language on this, okay? When this first derivative is less than zero, when it's negative, uh, what does that tell you geometrically about the graph? The gradient is negative, right? So an easier, uh, like one word for that is it's decreasing. Okay, decreasing, yes? Now, when the derivative is equal to zero, when the derivative is equal to zero, what do we say, what, what kind of language do you use to describe that? Uh, we would say it's, it's not going up and it's not going down, right? So therefore it's stationary, right? Not moving. And of course that's decreasing, this is positive, so this is increasing. Okay, that's the first derivative. Now, second derivative, okay? I should stay on this side actually. Again, negative, zero, positive. This tells you, instead of gradient, this tells you about concavity, right? So, I guess we would say, concave down, right? If that's concave down, I guess this would be concave up. How do we describe the middle one? When the second derivative is equal to zero. Um, I guess we say, no concavity, right? It's not one or the other. Okay, now, let's start to fill this in, okay? Uh, let's think about just this one, okay? It's decreasing, okay? So that means it's got to go from a higher value to a lower value, right? And in fact, all of the things in this column, you're going to go from a higher value to a lower value, right? But how does it get there? Well, it's concave down, right? Concave down, it's facing down. So this is the kind of shape you're going to get. It should be curved, okay? Can you see that? Decreasing and concave down. Now let's think about this one. Um, decreasing and there's no concavity. Mm, what would that mean? But well, you've got two alternatives. Number one, when you've got the um, second derivative being equal to zero, we just saw that often that'll give you a uh, point of inflection. Right? Not always, but often. Okay? So what would a decreasing point of inflection look like? Well, it'd be concave up and then it'd be concave down. And at that particular point, right in the middle, the second derivative will be equal to zero. Okay? So you have a um, point of inflection at that point. But that's not the only way to have a decreasing function with a second derivative equal to zero. Okay? Because take a line like, say, y equals minus x. Okay? You differentiate once. And you've got a negative value, which corresponds to this. But then you differentiate again, and sure enough, um, you have no concavity, which makes sense, because it's a straight line, it's not curved one way or the other, okay? So this is not just a point of inflection, um, this can also just be a straight line, okay? Can you see that's got no concavity, and it's still decreasing, okay? Alright, last one, it's still decreasing, going from higher to lower, but it's facing upwards, right? Concave up. So, this is the kind of shape that I've got. Okay, now, we'll fill out this side, the right-hand side, and we'll go to the middle last, because the right-hand side is just the reverse of the left-hand side. This time I'm increasing, and I'm concave down. So I'm going from lower to higher. Concave down. So it'll be a mirror image. Can you see that? Uh, this will also be the mirror image. You've got your straight line, okay? It's increasing with no concavity, or you've got another kind of point of reflection. Okay. Lastly, this again, it's a, uh, another mirror image. Mm -hmm. Now what happens in the middle? This is the fun one. If you have a stationary point, right, and it's concave down, we just looked at concavity as a test for whether something's a local max or a local min. So which one is this? It's a, it's a maximum, right? Okay, maximum turning point. 
Let's do this one because it's easier, then we'll go into the middle. If it's concave up and you've got the derivative being zero, then it's going to be a minimum. Okay, now what happens in the middle? We were just looking at this example, right? If you've got a stationary point, and it's a point of inflection at the same time, what kind of point could it be? Horizontal line. Right, we call it, we call it a horizontal point of inflection. It's just an animal What? It does. Like, oh, it does, follow. Yeah. Yeah, okay, anyway. Okay. Now, by the way, that's not the only kind of horizontal point of inflection you can have, right? You can have it the other way. Yes? Yeah, now it looks like an animal. Okay. So those are both horizontal points of inflection. Okay. The first derivative is zero, so you draw a horizontal tangent through it. But there's also a change in concavity. If this is concave down, then up, and this is up, then down. Okay. Yeah. You know how we plug that y with x to the four? What do you mean that? Like this. Yeah. Or x to the four. Right. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't always have to be. That's true. So you've got counterexamples to this, but this is the general pattern. So if you have that. Like if it says to prove that it's one infection and to prove whether it's horizontal or just a horizontal mm -hmm. one. Um, what if it's neither and then you have to. Like, yeah, okay, you would have to prove, you'd have to test the second derivative on either side and then you'd be like, well, it's concave up and then it's concave up. So it's still a stationary point, but it's, it's not a point of inflection because there's no change in concavity. Okay. And there's one last thing I missed out. You remember we had these straight lines here, right? Because straight lines are by definition, they have no concavity. Right? So I ought to have a straight line here. What kind? Horizontal. It should be horizontal because the derivative, the first derivative, is zero. Okay? So there's our family function. I suppose if you're like, you could include, you know, this guy here. Um, that's x to the 4, right? Because that, that was the counter example we looked at. Um, and to the 6 and so on and so on. Because there are so many different kinds, and they're the exception, uh, that's why I'm not including This is the general idea. Okay, this is the general idea. As you increase the pattern, it's get flat out of Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. Then you make that straight line. No, actually, because if you think about to x to the 100, it is still actually growing very hard, right? What happens is, all of these even powers, right? x squared, um, x to the 4, and so on, all the way up to here. You can see they all go through a common pair of points. They all go through 1, 1. Can you see that? Because 1 about 100 is still 1. Right? But what happens oh, is, right. your parabola might look like this, yeah. and then x to the 4 will be fatter, but it'll still go through 1, 1. And then x to the 6 will be fatter, but it still goes through 1, 1. And eventually you'll get like this kind of shape, and it'll look. Does, does that make sense? Okay. So these are the kinds of shapes that you get um, if, you, if you go and increase the power.